President Biden facing calls from the media to quit before he does even more damage to the country and his party. I'm laughing at Greg. As Biden recovers from COVID, liberals are sensing a golden opportunity to hit the guy while he's down and find someone better to replace him. And boy, Biden's down. The latest Quinnipiac poll has Joe's approval rating at another all-time low, just 31 percent. And now the Washington Post is giving the green light to this. Quit, Joe, quit. Biden could save the midterms with a one-term pledge. Chris Christie summing up the president's situation this way. When 64 percent of your own party says a year and a half into your presidency, thanks but no thanks, um, that does reflect, I agree with you, the frustrations of Democrats, some because they don't think he's done enough mm -hmm. and some because they think he's done too much. Joe Biden is in no man's land. That's an awful place to be as, a, as, a, as an office holder when you don't have anybody. As the president finds himself in more political peril, he's also running out of allies. All he has left is his dopey chief of staff, Ron Klain, who offered this lame explanation for the plummeting polls. Watch. I think the president's approval rating is kind of a reflection of how people feel about what's going on in the country. And some things in our country aren't going well, uh, not because of what the president did, but in fact, because of what the president's fighting against. All right. Before I ask you if you buy Ron Klain spin, what did you think of the MSNBC host's outfit? Oh, Jesus. Jesse, you asking me? I am. I'm not asking Greg. Well, you know what? I got to tell you, you can make comments on my outfit, too. I okay? would say it's green okay. and delicious. All right. Look, I'll tell you what I think about Ron Klain, though. I mean, when the guy actually says, the people are not disappointed in Joe Biden. They're disappointed in the country. Okay. Yeah, okay. It's not Joe. Are you kidding? I mean, when 18, uh, what is it, 71% of the Americans don't want this guy to run again? He's only a year and a half into his presidency? I mean, you know, and it, you can try to spin it any way you want. You can tell the American people, don't believe your lying eyes. It's better than you think it is. The truth is, when you go to buy gas, when you go to the supermarket, when you go to buy baby formula, when you think about people in Afghanistan, when you talk about your neighbor whose kid's got a drug problem, and then you think about what's going on coming through the southern border, the fact that the word fentanyl has never come out of Joe Biden's mouth, this guy is totally clueless to what's going on in this country. And so, you know what? They can try to cover it up and, and, and sugarcoat it any way they want. Americans know how they feel. They know what they see. And they got it right. Christie's interpretation of Joe being in no man's land, Greg. So he's saying that people don't like him because he's not done enough. And then the rest of the party doesn't like him because he hasn't done, he's done too much. See, this is, I think this is a mistake uh, to frame it this way, because if you're saying that the left hates you and the moderates hate you, that could be a compliment for a Democrat. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Because if you're an equal opportunist when it comes to disappointing people. But it could just be that he's really bad. You know, uh, if Biden, you know, the mark of a good movie is you can you know it's a good movie within the first 10 minutes. And the Biden presidency is like a bad movie. So you <laughs> sit down and then within 10 minutes you're going, oh, my God, this is not what we expected. And you can at least... You can leave the movie. Unfortunately, you can't leave this movie. You're stuck here. But the more that the Dems deny Biden, the more I say he should get four more years. Because that's what the, <laughs> because the more you know what because that's what the Dems do with Republicans. They they seize upon the most vulnerable candidates in races, right? And they try to you know beg him up or what do you call him? Big him up and egg it on. Why don't I, that's what the Republicans should do? They should they should want to to run against Biden. But the discontent. The discontent is getting louder because January 6th floundered. It ended up accidentally exonerating Trump. There's, they showed no plan coup, <laughs> no criminality. They had to move the goalposts into the parking lot. Now it's like, oh, he, he took too long. Fine. Why is it that he seems more electable now? It's like, it's, is it because the public saw that it was a show trial and that they didn't sympathize? They actually sympathized with the other side, then with the, with, with the Congress. They just saw them as a bunch of drama queens. So this is a teachable moment. You know, when Trump looks better than Biden after three weeks of nonstop political agitprop, then that, that says something about your candidate. The guy's less, less popular than chronic halitosis. He stinks. <laughs> Jessica, to Greg's point about the, the movie concept, 
Usually presidencies have like peaks and valleys. You know, Trump's was kind of like that. You know, yeah. things would be really bad, and then he'd kill a big terrorist. Or, <laughs> you know, he'd be impeached, and then you know he he'd be acquitted. It was kind of go like be this. Impeached again, right? And then <laughs> right. Kind of ended on a, ended on a uh, ended on a we, valley. We're not even at the third act yet. Right. But Joe <laughs> Biden, since he came in, has just gone down, down, farther and farther. Afghanistan, the border, yeah. both Delta waves. He gets COVID. He falls off his bike. Everything has just gone down. Has he done anything well so far? Well, I know Democrats are most upset about falling off his bike. That was really when we said, this guy has got to go. Symbolic. Can I get the uh, twice impeached, uh, you know, COVID denier in the beginning guy back in office? Um, a lot of points were made. I want to try to address them. First, on the January 6th committee, not a show trial. We even had the Wall Street Journal and the New York Post saying that Trump was unelectable again, that it was dereliction of duty. He sat by and watched this for hours. And That's he was not the one person. That's what the hearings were about. But of anyway. course it is what no, the hearings a, are about. No, it was about finding some kind of criminal responsibility. We haven't even and gotten then find to about it. An oh, we, that's right. That'll happen in September, right? No, <laughs> yeah. but there are people who October. are arguing. October. The October there surprise. are conservatives who are arguing that they have seen it. Anyway, they're the same the people. Is, Joe the Biden people. is very unpopular. Ron Klain, you can just say his poll numbers are bad. That's fine, because there is actually good news, which is that Democrats, if you look at the, what's happening on the congressional ballot, are inching up and up and up. So now it's not a wave election. It's a competitive election. Ooh, We've seen Nate. It so is? Yes, and our own Fox polling team has come up with uh, that as well. The old Fox Wait, polling Fox again. What? <laughs> right. Actually, some of the best pollsters in the industry are here at Fox. So Nate Silver, Nate Cohn, Dave Wasserman have all shifted their analyses towards this. We have three new GOP polls that came out within the last few days. Chamber of Commerce, Echelon Insights, and Americans for Prosperity all had Democrats up three to five points. Now, I'm not saying we don't lose the House, but there is certainly a chance that we only lose a few seats. I think our bottom rating is losing seven seats, um, the Fox mm. rating from the pollsters here. Um, and keeping the Senate. And that's a pretty great outcome for a midterm. All right, you want to put some money on that? How much? How you much you make you a lot more than me. Okay, $100. $100 more than 70 How about seats? the loser has wait, to have their kid babysit by me? <laughs> How about that? Are you sure okay. you want to volunteer You for should that? just take both of them. I think them you'll regret that you, offer. You love babies, so. Oh, regret yes. that offer, Greg. Take it back, take All it right. back. <laughs> Look, Democrats are trying to get rid of Joe Biden in 2024 because they think he's going to lose against pretty much any Republican president, especially President Donald Trump if he runs. Joe Biden is less popular now than President Trump was, and he has nowhere to go from here. He's a lame duck president. His agenda is dead before the midterms. And what Democrats are offering is not someone like a Joe Manchin to replace Biden in 2024, who is a more moderate who is reflective of the country as a Democrat and just as an American, they want someone like Gavin Newsom, who was at the White House when Joe Biden was overseas. <laughs> he just, like, snuck right in there to have a meeting with Ron Klain and acted like everything was fine and there was no other agenda other than what was going on in California. They're not looking for someone who is more moderate than Joe Biden. They're looking for someone who is even further to the left. If they were smart, what would happen is Joe Biden, if, when Republicans do win the House, maybe the Senate, uh, they would work with him like Bill Clinton did, and he could revive his presidency after Republicans take over. Given the way that Ron Klain has run the White House, I doubt that's going to happen. The other thing is that they're redefining of the word recession. I mean, it's like they redefine words and think that it just doesn't exist. And it's like every American knows that we're in a recession. They're all saving money for a recession. 80 percent, 90 percent of the country is affected by high gas prices, which the administration is doing on purpose. So this idea that they can just say, well, it doesn't technically mean this, they're completely out of touch with what people are feeling, and just redefining the word or not mentioning it isn't going to change everybody's status with the economy. Um, and it, they clearly have no policy position that they're going to change either. Yeah, I'm going to start redefining words. Oh. Well, well woman's already been redefined. You have to learn the words so. first, Jesse. <laughs> oh, you got me there, Greg. <laughs> Hi, everyone. I'm Brian Kilmeade. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to click to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page. This is the only way that I know for sure that you're not going to miss any great commentary, any great news bites, any great interviews coming your way on Fox. You can get it all here on YouTube. So subscribe right now.